<sighs> oh, hey. I'm not even that upset about the game, guys, so I don't even know why you're bringing it up. <sighs> don't shank it. Don't. No! Get the ball! Gosh dang it! Freaking find the ball! Okay, fine. I was a little upset, but it's not like I thought they were going to win the Super Bowl or anything. The Packers are going to win it all this year. It needs to happen. Okay, this is enough of this interrogate. Let's just get into the freaking video. Hey, what up, everyone? It's Matt Mamba, and today we're going to be ranking my miseries. That's right. I'm going to be doing a tier list on all the heartbreaking Packers playoff losses I've witnessed in my life. And before I hear you freaking idiots in the comments that are going to be like, Oh, look at this spoiled Packers fan ranking his playoff losses. At least you're in the playoffs. I'm a fan of the Lions or the Jaguars who never make it into the playoffs. You should be lucky. All right, how's about this for an analogy right here? Let's say the Lions and the Jaguars is like going out to eat at Denny's. If you get a trash meal, you're not all that surprised or disappointed, are you? But let's say the Packers are like a five-star restaurant. You're expecting fine dining and beautiful cuisine. But what you get is just some garbage food that's overcooked and not even edible. And it, it hurts because you had expectations going into that restaurant. And then you finally get there and it just poops the bed when you get there. And oh my god. So you guys see where I'm trying to go with this? All right, so you can kick rocks with all the people saying I'm a spoiled Packers fan. I know I'm a spoiled Packers fan. I want more rings, baby. All right, so just a couple things before we get into this tier list. First of all, I'm only doing a tier list on games that I myself remember watching and witnessing and crying about. So the games I'm going to do are from 2007, which was Brett Favre's last year as a Green Bay Packer, all the way up to 2021, where we lost to the 49ers. Again! And so, some other factors that go into where these games rank is, you know, the result of the game. All the craziness, all the what-ifs that could have happened, how close we were to winning it, that kind of stuff. And also the expectations of winning it all. You know, if we lose a playoff game, but, you know, we weren't really high Super Bowl contenders that year, you know, they're going to be lower ranked compared to those years where I'm like, oh my god, this this is a Super Bowl or bust year. This is our year. That, that That's kind of how I'm approaching this tier list. Welcome to the tier list zone, my friends. Boom, baby, let's go. Before we even start this tier list, let me just say, I apologize. I made these graphics and I didn't size them right. You can only see half the opposing team's logo on top and half of the year on the bottom. But I think you can make it out what the year is and what the opposing team is, even though you can only see half of it. So I'm not resizing it. I already spent way too much time making those little graphics and I'm going to spend way too much time making this video. So kick rocks. We're just going right into it. Starting with 2007. Ooh, we're starting with an actual barn burner here. The NFC Championship game against the New York Giants. We lost 23-20 to in overtime. This was Brett Favre's final year as a Green Bay Packer. I believe if we win this game and at least go to the Super Bowl, Brett Favre retires and he never becomes a Jet. He never goes to the freaking Vikings and alienates 90% of Packers fans. And, uh, you know, this was just like... We could have won it, you know? The Giants pulled off the upset against the undefeated New England Patriots this year. Why couldn't Brett Favre and this Green Bay Packers team? So at one point, this game was tied 20-20, to and we were punting the ball with just over two minutes left. Special teams actually does something good. They force a fumble midfield, but we don't recover it. If we just recover that freaking punt, Brett Favre only needs a couple first downs. We get into a rookie Mason Crosby's field goal range. He kicks that game winner because obviously he's Mason Crosby, and we move on to the freaking Super Bowl. But we couldn't even recover the freaking uh, punt return. They somehow get it back, and it ends up going to overtime. And who could forget one of the greatest blunders? Oh, my gosh. Brett Favre throws this awful interception targeted to Donald Driver that pretty much puts him in field goal range right away. Brett Favre is known for being a freaking gunslinger. This man can throw some heaters. But he just throws this little lob pass, and it just season over. Just, just an all-time terrible Brett Favre interception. It hurts. This is an S-tier freaking heartbreaking loss, and this is my number two ranked heartbreaking loss that I've witnessed in my life. This was a tough one as a young kid who loved Brett Favre and thought he was a god to see him just absolutely choke it right there. Yikes. 
Let's just move on to the Aaron Rodgers era. 2009, we got a young Aaron Rodgers in his second year as a starter. We're in the wild card round against the Arizona Cardinals. And this game is known as the Aaron Rodgers-Kurt Warner shootout. Both these guys were just on top of their freaking game. Defense was non-existent until the, the first play of the game when Aaron Rodgers started the game with an interception. And the last play of the game where Aaron Rodgers was fumbled it and they recovered it in the end zone for a touchdown in overtime to win it. This game ended by a score of 51-45, to one of the highest scoring playoff games in history. It might be the highest scoring, I don't know. Don't, don't fact check me, but a couple things that make this thing heartbreaking. First play of overtime, Aaron Rodgers has Greg Jennings wide open, deep. He just misses it by that much. If Rodgers connects with Jennings there and leads him, it's a freaking touchdown. It's literally a first play overtime touchdown. That's the game. What an incredible game. Instead, he overthrows Greg Jennings by just a, just a little bit. And uh, you know what happens next. Um, they freaking... Rodgers gets sacked. He fumbles the ball. It gets recovered by Carlos Dansby. He takes it in the end zone to end the game. There was a missed face mask on Aaron Rodgers. The guy, when he was freaking sacking Rodgers, had a, had a handful of face mask. Should have been a penalty. They didn't call it. Ugh. It's heartbreaking. And another thing that's underrated about this is we could have possibly had an NFC Championship game this year of a young Aaron Rodgers against a Minnesota Vikings Brett Favre. That could have been the NFC Championship game if we beat the Cardinals and then somehow beat the number one seeded New Orleans Saints. Uh, we could have, we could have had that. This was this was a heartbreaker. I have this at A tier, and I have this at number seven. That's how heartbreaking it is to be a Packers fan in the postseason. This is the seventh ranked heartbreaking loss. A 51 to 45 overtime fumble recovery touchdown is only ranked to number seven from 2007 to 2021. Oh boy, let's just move on to 2011. The Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl the previous year and we go 15 and 1 in 2011. We get the the first round by. We take on the New York Giants once again in the divisional round and we lose by a score of 37 to 20. We get absolutely embarrassed. The best team in the NFL loses one and done. I think we're the only 15 and 1 team to lose in the divisional round just so many things went wrong the refs were actually helping us we got a lot of generous calls by the refs they actually missed some calls the refs were definitely skewed more towards the Packers in this game but just so many things went wrong we had fumbles we had dropped passes we had missed tackles and it has this whole narrative of oh is is the bye week actually an advantage because bye week teams come out flat it starts that whole stupid narrative that I don't believe in. We also had that Eli Manning Hail Mary to end the first half. That was just like, oh my gosh. Um, so many things just, you know. We should have won this game, but we, we got outplayed. We lost 37-20. to 20. We're 15-1, and one, man. We should, we should have at least made it to the NFC Championship game. This is an S-tier loss. We could have gone back-to-back, -back, won back-to-back -back Super Bowls. This is the fifth most heartbreaking loss, in my opinion, that I've witnessed that was a tough one man but moving on to 2012 we begin Aaron Rodgers versus the San Francisco 49ers in the divisional round we have Aaron Rodgers versus Colin Kaepernick and this is Colin Kaepernick at the height of his abilities he just ran all over us he sliced and diced us and made this Packers defense look like a bunch of freaking idiots uh we didn't have a chance we lost 45 to 31 the last time we had a chance, we were actually up 14-7 early on in the game. But, of course, special teams comes through. I don't even know who the punt returner was, but he fumbled the freaking ball inside the 10-yard line, gave the 49ers an easy seven points, and then it was all downhill from there. This is a B-tier loss just because we were just so thoroughly outplayed that I can't even be that mad. This is the 11th ranked heartbreaking loss. This is the lowest ranked heartbreaking loss I have on this list. Just because we just got absolutely destroyed. They were clearly the superior team, so I can't even be that mad. Moving on to the next year, guess who we take on in the wild card round? It's Colin Kaepernick and the San Francisco 49ers. And if you know anything about Aaron Rodgers taking on the San Francisco 49ers, <coughs> we lost. Alright, so this game was a pretty similar to the 2021 game. It was a 
super cold Lambeau Field game, and we lose in a game-winning field goal. We lost this game 23-20 to against the San Francisco 49ers. Ugh. And let me just say on that game-winning field goal by Phil Dawson, we were that close to blocking it. If you rewatch it, the guy actually, I think he jumps over the field goal, and we don't block it. Again, another thing where special teams, oh, it looks like you're going to do something good. Never mind, you guys are just going to tick me off once again. Um, another thing of note for this game is Micah Hyde dropped an interception with 4.09 left in the fourth quarter. That would have given us at least three points. That would have given us the lead. Who knows if Kaepernick makes a drive for a field goal or a touchdown, how much time is left. But this would have likely given us at least a lead. Just that close to it. We should have won this game, I think. And it just stings even more that we lost to this team the previous year and we lose to them in back-to-back -back years. This was also the 2013 season. It was pretty magical. It was that season where Aaron Rodgers actually missed seven games, but he came back for the final week of the regular season to take down the Bears and win the division on that walk-off touchdown by Randall Cobb. Oh, it was just... It just seemed like this could be a magical year, and oh, never mind. Colin Kaepernick's here to tick us off once again. We lose to the 49ers. So this is an A-tier loss. I have it ranked number eight. You know, it's a heartbreaker. This is one we should have won, but we've just faced so much heartbreak that it's only ranked number eight. Moving on to the granddaddy of them all, the 2014 NFC Championship game against the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, my God. My head hurts just thinking about this game. I was so upset. And I, I still get upset anytime I see highlights or I just have it in the back of my head and I remember this game. The Brandon Bostic dropped onside kick where if he just does his job and Jordy, Jody Nelson's right there to literally just catch it, that would have been the game. The most garbage two-point conversion in history to make it a three-point game. I mean... We had Russell Wilson dead to rights, but he does Russell Wilson things where he scrambles, keeps the play alive, just chucks up a throw on his back foot. He's got this tight end that I don't even know who he is. Ha ha, Clinton Dix. All he has to do is bat that ball down or tackle him before he gets into the end zone. He decides to do neither. He catches the ball and just lands into the end zone. One of the stupidest two-point conversions you'll ever see. And the Seahawks turned the ball over five times this game. Five times we they turned the ball over. We just couldn't convert them into a lot of points. Holy frick, that'll be a theme for later games. So many things had to go wrong. Even if that stupid two-point conversion, we just stop that. Aaron Rodgers drives him down the field. Mason Crosby hit the freaking field goal. But instead of it being a game winner, it forced overtime. We lost in overtime 28-22. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an S-tier heartbreaking loss. And this is number one on my ranking. Because I was literally, during the game, we, we pick off Russell Wilson with like, Five minutes left in the game. I'm like, oh, baby, that's it. I'm I'm just picturing in my head, okay, we're going to the Super Bowl. Holy cow, I'm so excited. This team can win it all this year. You know, Aaron Rodgers is coming off an injury, but he's battling through it. He's playing some good football. Oh, my God. We should This is the, the most painful game I've ever witnessed in my life. i, I got to move on to, to, to save my sanity, but I just looked at the next game, and guess what? It's a heartbreaker. It's almost like that's the whole point of the video. 2015 divisional round against the Arizona Cardinals. You guys might know this game as the double Hail Mary game. Aaron Rodgers and Jeff Janis connecting on two huge throws to force overtime, but we still lose in overtime by a score of 26 to 20. Oh my God. Let me just, first of all, before we get into the, into the Hail Mary junk, Two dropped interceptions by Sam Shields inside the five-yard line that ended up resulting in ten points for the Arizona Cardinals. If if Sam Shields just grabs one of those interceptions, we probably win this game. Not to mention that stupid ricochet touchdown where Demarius Randall swats the ball away from Larry Fitzgerald, but it bounces back right into Michael Floyd's hands in the end zone for a touchdown. That gave them the lead in the fourth. And... Obviously, the double Hail Mary, Aaron Rodgers backed up in his own end zone. On a fourth and fourth and forever, throws it to Jeff Janis to keep the drive alive. And then that Hail Mary to Jeff Janis to force overtime. If we would have won this game, it would have been one of the all-time great games for the Green Bay Packers. It would have been Aaron Rodgers, probably his most iconic moment. I mean, it's still one of his most iconic moments, but we, we ended up losing. So that, that really hurts the legacy of the game. 
And, and I'll be honest, 2015, the Packers weren't good. This was probably one of Aaron Rodgers' worst years. We were throwing to guys like Jeff Janis and Jared Aberderis. Everyone was hurt. It was a mess. We weren't going to win the Super Bowl. But I still wanted to win this game so bad just because of how good of a freaking game and a story it would have been. This is an A-tier loss. It's ranked number nine just for the sole fact that we really weren't going to contend for a Super Bowl. We couldn't win the Super Bowl this year, in my opinion. But, man, I... In terms of just solo games, this would this would have been an S tier loss just because of how legendary and uh, insane it would have been if we won it, but we didn't. All right, moving on to 2016 NFC Championship game against the Atlanta Falcons. We lost this game by a score of 44 to 21. A lot of people have this one low on their lists if they make lists about heartbreaking losses. Um, I have this one pretty high. I have it A tier and I have it ranked at number six. Just for the sole fact, this was the run the table season. We were four and six, and then we win every game to win, to end the regular season. We go ten and six. We win the division. We take down the Giants in the wild card round. We take down the Dallas Cowboys in, in an all time classic Aaron Rodgers Green Bay Packers playoff game. And we come into this game, and I have the expectations of oh my god, all we have to do is beat Matt frickin' Ryan, and we're in the Super Bowl. Yet another chance we would have had to see Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady face off in the Super Bowl, but it just didn't happen. Um, it just seemed like we were destined to go to the Super Bowl, and I just had such high expectations for this team. So that's why it's ranked at number six. Um, before this was a blowout, though, you know, we had a promising drive going. We were down 10 nothing early in the second quarter, but we had a promising drive going. Aaron Ripkowski is freaking bulldozing through people. He's getting us inside the red zone, and he fumbles, and that costs all momentum. I think that fumble right there. There was also a near pick before halftime where the Atlanta Falcons ended up scoring a few plays later. But if we just got that interception there and then Aaron Ripkowski doesn't fumble there, just a couple plays right there, just a few inches away, and this game could have been a really close one and we could have ended up actually winning it. But just all momentum went their way and we ended up getting blown out and that was a season ender. I got it ranked number six, man. I just I, I thought 2016 was a year we could have won it all. I don't know, it just felt like we got hot at the right time and then in the NFC Championship game. But, you know, preview of what's to come. Moving on, we have a, a few stinky years in the remaining Mike McCarthy era. You know, Aaron Rodgers gets hurt. But it's 2019. Matt LaFleur's here. We're in the NFC Championship game against the San Francisco 49ers. And we just absolutely get destroyed by a score of 37-20. to 20. We lost by 17, but it feels like we lost by 50. We couldn't stop the run. Raheem Mostert ran for what seemed like 875 yards. Jimmy Garoppolo threw the ball only eight times, and yet somehow Mike Pettin and this Packers defense were just absolutely dumbfounded every time they decided to run the ball. We just absolutely were not the better team. They were the better team. This is B-tier loss. This is number 10 on the heartbreak scale. I mean, we were still a game away from the Super Bowl. Um... But we, we, we weren't the better team. But then 2020 comes along against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is another NFC Championship game. We lose by a score of 31-26. to 26. <sighs> ah, This game ticks me off. You guys, I, I got a whole live stream and live stream highlights video of me witnessing this freaking collapse of a game. We couldn't capitalize on three Tom Brady interceptions in the second half. We only got three points out of those three turnovers. What if Aaron Rodgers ran on that? I can't remember if it was a second and goal or third and goal. What if Aaron Rodgers ran? He could have. He could have. He, I think he could have ran for the end zone. He could have at least cut the field in half. And instead of us, and instead of it being like a fourth and goal from like the eight yard line, it would have been a fourth and goal from like the four to maybe even like the two yard line. And instead of Matt LaFleur deciding to kick the field goal, maybe we decide to go for it on fourth and goal. We get the touchdown, and we tie it up with a two-point conversion. And then instead, we kick the field goal. We have a chance to stop him on defense. And then the refs, who haven't been calling any any penalties the whole freaking game, decide to finally call a defensive holding, even though they haven't been calling that all freaking game. So we don't even get a chance to put up a miracle drive. And there was also a rare Devontae Adams drop touchdown that... Instead of being a touchdown, we end up taking three points. All of that to lose 36-21 to against Tom Brady. And uh, 
I'm just gonna say it. We want to We would have won the Super Bowl this year had we won this game. The the Kansas City Chiefs had no offensive line. There's no way they would have been able to keep up with the Green Bay Packers offense. We would have won this freaking Super Bowl had we just gotten past the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Had we just done one of those things I mentioned earlier. This is an S tier heartbreaking loss. This is number three on my list. This was our year, man. This was this was this was. This was our freaking year, and we just couldn't do it. Not to mention, even if David Bakhtiari was healthy, that changes that game heavily in favor of the Packers, but... Ah, oh boy. Moving on to the final and most recent heartbreaking loss, the San Francisco 49ers. You guys saw what happened. So many things went wrong for us to lose this game. We were the Super Bowl favorites this postseason. I don't think that's crazy to say. We lose this game yet again to the 49ers by a score of 13-10. to Just so many what-ifs. What if Mercedes Lewis didn't fumble that ball in the first quarter? What if Aaron Jones, on that big 75-yard reception, either goes out of bounds or scores? What if that blocked field goal never happens? What if the fumble wasn't overturned that we had? What if A.J. Dillon didn't get hurt on special teams? We could have used him to pound the freaking ball and run a lot of clock in the second half. What if that stupid punt wasn't blocked that resulted in the only 49ers touchdown of the game? What if on our final offensive play on 3rd and 11, instead of Aaron Rodgers going deep to Devontae Adams, who was double covered and didn't have a chance in the world of making this freaking catch, he just throws it to a wide-open Alan Lazard, who would have easily gotten the first down, and probably he would have got like 40 or 50 yards on that play. What if any one of those things would have happened, we would have won this freaking game? Everything had to go wrong for us to lose this game. I'm not saying we would have won the Super Bowl. It wasn't as clear-cut as last year. You know, we would still would have had to take on the, the Los Angeles Rams, who are a tough opponent, and then we would have had to take on either the uh, the Bengals or the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I'm not saying we would have won the Super Bowl, but I, I'm saying we would have had a dang good shot at winning it. But the offense just couldn't get anything going. The special teams put up one of the worst all-time performances in NFL history. Defense put up an incredible game, and it was all for nothing. This is an S-tier, heartbreaking loss. I don't care if you say recency bias. This one hurts. So much had to go wrong. This was such a promising team. This is an S-tier, heartbreaking loss. I have it at number four on my list because I'm just going to I'm just gonna assume Aaron Rodgers isn't done. I just got a feeling in my heart that Aaron Rodgers is going to run it back for one more year with the Green Bay Packers, and then who knows what will happen after that. But if this is the last... Aaron Rodgers, hurrah with the Green Bay Packers. This is our last run with him. I'll probably move it up to number three and, and bump the Buccaneers down to number four just because this is how the Rodgers era ends, where we're Super Bowl favorites and we just come up short once again to the 49ers. It hurts. I, I'm still replaying it in my head, and I'm still just rolling my eyes and slapping my forehead. But I still love this Packers team. Every day is a great day to be a Packers fan, and I'm going to be rooting this team on for as long as I'm living. So, I'm Matt Mamba. I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know how to close videos. Oh, boy. What am I going to do? My heart hurts too much for me to come up with a silly and hilarious way to end this video. So, I'm just going to roll you guys the clip of me doing a sound check before, right when I started recording this video. Hope you enjoy my idiocy. Sound check. So, so sound check. Checking the sound and banging my boobs. Checking the sound and banging my boobs. All right, let's see how that sounds. There. Was, was that a good Was that a good ending of the video? Oh, look at this. Look at this end screen. Holy cow, hit subscribe. Uh, look, click on that video. Oh, click on that other video. So many things you can click. Why haven't you done them? Come on, man.